His rock star is his contemporary poet. Danger signal. Note of warning. Trap door, trap for the unwary. Prophylaxis. Protective, preventive, conservative, preservative, prophylactic. Well preserved. <laughs> Inexpertness, inexpertise, gaucherie, greenness, frustration. Hopes unrealised. I think this book's trying to tell me something. Take a back, stagger, stun. Take one's breath away. Knock one down with a feather. Clever. I'll get it all out of you. You're my inspiration. Oh, my sweet desire. From the first impression, you set my nerves on fire. I'm telling you I love you. What else can I say? Cause you're my inspiration in every single day. I've got enough to live on. I've got, I've got a flat now, which is the first flat I've ever had. I'm 40. I can work here. I can feel involved with my work. I feel very happy. Much happier than I've ever felt since New Boots and Panties was made. When I made New Boots and Panties, I was a very happy geezer. Until I was 36, I, I didn't have any psychological problems that I could think of. I didn't have any um, hang-ups. I didn't worry about who I was or what I was. I felt like I was a dirty little pig and I was quite happy to be there. No, darling. You're my inspiration. I love you. Stop it, Kat. Then I stopped being. I started being required to be, not Des O'Connor, but along those lines, a, a household name. People can't kind of say, you're a household name now, you know. I felt like a piece of Tupperware. I felt like I'd been ordinary, like I'd become plastic. I almost can't believe it. do an album called The Dancing Durex and I phoned up, because they used to call me that at school, and I phoned up the R London Rubber Company and I spoke to this nice geezer. I said, well, you know, he said, well, we don't want it to become a generic, do we? I said, I thought it already, it already was a generic. I thought that's what a generic was preventing you having babies, right? I didn't know what a generic was. He's going, no, but we don't want it to become a... I said, no, but it is a generic, and he? he said, no, no, no. I said, what about... Like that, Gossamers. We were going to have a, a band called the Endurex and the Rhythm Method about oh, me and Dave Robinson. It's about six years ago. And the, the backing vocal girls are going to be called the Gossamers. And I could just see the Gossamers over there. I could see them in a sort of a, a violet light. Oh, You're my inspiration. inspiration. It is a bloody business. Which informs us to my eye. Now. Or the one half world, nature seems dead. T.S. Eliot said that the immature artist plagiarises. After all the sorrows and problems. And the mature artist steals. And one of these days I'm going to grow up. In the deserts of Sudan. In the gardens of Japan, from Milan to Yucatan, every woman, every man. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me, hit me. Shitado, ich liebe dich. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me slowly. Hit me quick. Hit me. What hit me was a, it was a kind of high point, and I should have stopped then and 
gone away and had a good old think and try and got my spirit back, because my spirit was definitely on a wobbly... Partly because I was very tired, and we all were, all the band were, but partly because it had seemed to get out of hand, you know. It seemed to be all about making bread and all about being famous. I didn't used to be like that. I really didn't have the bollocks to stop, so I didn't stop. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me, hit me. Das ist gut, say, fantastic. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Hit me with your rhythm stick. It's nice to be a lunatic. Hit me, hit me, hit me. When Ian gets going and with a rock and roll band, you're talking about 16 people all drawing £10,000 a year is £160,000 a year. Drawing £160,000 in a year net, you know, after your expenses, uh, you're talking about doing a lot of work. I mean, talking record sales, you're talking about selling 320,000 albums after you've paid for the cost of making the album, which maybe cost you 30, 40, 50,000 pounds, depending on how fussy you are about it and all the rest of it, you know. If you also then expect not to make any money on the road, you see the sort of pressure you're putting in on your record. You know, you've got all these mouths to feed on you. So you've got all these people putting their sort of vibe on you about, uh, you know, oh, Christ, I hope the record's good, you know. And, uh, you know, when are we going on the road? Uh, because uh, I need to get paid, you know, and all this sort of thing coming on to the essentially very personal thing that Ian has, which is writing his songs. So I think there is inevitable conflict or a strain. I asked Dave Robinson, who runs Stiff Records, um, after three years of being on, on the road and being grasping and all that stuff, I said I should go around the bend. When that happens, he was going to be my manager at the time, I said, when that happens, will you be able to look after me? Will you be able to help me? Will you be any use to me when I crack up? And he said, no, I won't. I'll take you down the road to Black Hill because the chances were that they could do that better. I knew what would happen. I knew that, you know, we're all unique men. We can all feel our own uniqueness. If we wish to package our uniqueness, we take a risk with our souls. Those risks are real. As the record stopped selling as much, it's been hard because of the way Ian works, everything is so very personal. He's not a sort of person who just hires you and fires you, you know, at all. People do see themselves as part of the family. And when the family starts going broke, it becomes very difficult. I think Ian has been under pressure to do things which have not necessarily been in his best interests in order to provide the flow of money to keep things going. And I think Ian has sort of gone along with that because he himself has enjoyed having you know, the people in the office, the band, the blockheads, all that thing going on all around him and all revolving around him yeah. was a thing which I think was obviously was a lot of fun. Where'd you get a haircut, Mark Spencer's? No, I cut down it myself. Do it yourself. Okay, well, so in other words, if back said, I've done it for a while. Ian has wound down his operation. I think he found, had very little time for actually doing any work because he spent all his time with industrial relations problems. He's very good at it, but the amount of energy and time he put into holding all that thing together was time that he didn't have for either being a human being or for, you know, uh, writing or whatever. Mm. Mm. All right, well, I'll try well, I want me to do the centrefold. Well, that's no, so a write your own piece. I thought you might be into it, you know, because you're just uh, done a few the odd write your own piece. I did a nudie centrefold, right? <laughs> what, and what's the end of this piece you see? The original? Ah, oh, now that's quite interesting. Um, Simon Bates a good piece, isn't he? Yeah. I spoke to that geezer, Paul. Yeah. Sounds like a very nice geezer. What he wants to do is to sort of like get a record together <coughs> for the 100th year anniversary of NSPCC. Unless you wanted to write something or something like that, you see. Mm. So that's sort of... Put it all in the polio folio. He's a nice geezer, though, isn't he? He's dead to vicar. You know, he does his gig, I do mine. Basically. His gig is to try and keep me solvent or something, and protect me. Uh, you see, to be like me, you've got to be a bit of a selfish loony and not worry about things like night and day and not worry about right and wrong and so forth. And one's behaviour does make one ashamed quite often, so I try and keep away from those relationships where somebody's going to suffer because of my behaviour. Um, and Peter is a very, very nice, very kind man, a very lovely man, and I love him to death. Um, we don't always get on too well because his job is, in a way, to look after my weaknesses. Um, he's managing me. He's managing the things I can't do for myself, isn't he? That's what a manager is.